Hello painters and Merry Christmas, it's Laura. I am gonna show you today how to complete our Santa's belt painting. As always, I'm gonna tell you how easy it is because it really is, and of course I'm gonna walk you through it one step at a time. In order to get your belt and also the trim to look really nice and straight, we're gonna use a straight edge to create those lines ahead of time. So I have a ruler. You really can use anything that's got a straight edge if you just even have a piece of cardboard or something that you can use. I'm going to kind of wing it. I'm not gonna do any measurements as far as like making sure this is exactly this many inches and this is that many. Um, I'm really just gonna kind of uh, just eyeball it. I'm gonna make, make sure my line goes straight up and down. Um, I don't want it to look crooked or anything like that. So just keep your straight edge parallel to the edge of your painting. That looks pretty centered. And then for the belt, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna make kind of like an intersection through the center. So that's where the actual buckle, the belt buckle is going to be. Now you can also do this painting in green and it ends up looking like an elf belt. So that's really cute too. Got my usual three brushes. I have a large one, a half inch paintbrush, a uh, six round, and also a little bitty baby brush for details. And I'm gonna start actually with the trim. Now, if you wanna add more trim at the end to make it look really fluffy around the edges, you can. I like to do this first, simply because I don't want, if I, if I have like wet red paint and then I try to paint the trim, I'm gonna end up with pink trim in the middle. So I'm gonna do the, the trim first. So yes, we want it to be white, but you're not gonna be able to see all the fluffiness. All I do is put white there. So I'm actually gonna make a very, very light gray. I've got just a tiny touch of black and I'm gonna mix that into some of my white. I'm gonna save some white for later on. Now, I that barely did anything, but that's good. You can always make your color darker. You can always add more paint in but once it's in there, you can't really take it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another touch and that looks pretty good there. I'm not gonna worry too much about mixing it completely. Um, I am gonna add a drop or two of water to it, as always, because acrylic paint is meant to be watered down. And if we don't add that water to it, um, it's gonna be really thick and gluey. So going straight down the middle here, I'm gonna use more of like a, almost like a stamping kind of, like a really brushy motion. I want this to look you know, kind of fluffy. Just right down the center. And then down here as well. And right now, it still looks kind of um, like flat. Pardon me, I have terrible allergies. I apologize if I'm sniffing through the entire thing here. So I'm just gonna kind of stamp that in. It looks nice and fluffy that way when you use more of like a stamping motion or if you use more short choppy brush strokes. You can also add this to the top and the bottom, and that way your painting wraps around all the edges. So once that's on there, I can now go ahead and take more white paint, just plain white, not the gray, and I can add it on top, and that's gonna help to create some texture because I wanna show that it's, you know, it's, it's gonna look a lot more white actually once we get the darker colors in here. It's not gonna look like, right now you're just like, okay, Santa has like, gray trim on his coat, but it will look much, much brighter when we get those other darker colors on there. So there's my trim. If you want to make it a little bit more shadowy around the edges, you can grab a touch of black on your brush and just add a little bit more shadow there. This will also in turn kind of help to brighten up any areas that look like they're lighter because areas that are light don't look light unless there are areas that are dark for contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. And actually, I'm just gonna keep it in there for the moment. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint in the belt buckle. So it's gonna be just yellow. I'm gonna just get my paintbrush wet and mix that small amount of water in my brush into a small amount of paint. I am sharpening my brush, which means I'm twisting it like this to get the bristles to stick together and also to make sure I don't have too much paint stuck in there. So this, in order to make this nice and square, I'm gonna try to keep my paintbrush on the canvas the whole time I'm doing this. 
well, for the whole line, I should say. I'm gonna kind of just place it here and press down so that the edge of my brush is on the edge of the pencil and just pull it in a downward direction. And then I'm gonna pull, do the same thing on all four sides. And then if you decide you want it to be a little bit wider, you can go ahead and widen it out. I want to be a little bit, I want to show that nice shiny belt buckle through there. Okay. And then if you want to add some highlights to it, actually it's more like a shadow. I'm going to add the tiniest, ittiest, bittiest touch of red to some of my yellow, like a pin prick. That's going to make an orange color. What that does is create the shadow in the yellow. So I'm just going to kind of drag that across there. Not that it's dark by any means, but I just want to show that it, in order to be reflective, you're going to need some darks and some lights. I'm going to add the light in just a little bit after my yellow is starting to dry. So I'm just rinsing this brush off now. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in the corners. So the corners are going to be red, obviously. And I'm going to use my medium paintbrush for this. I'm mixing a small amount of water into here. I'm going to sharpen my brush, as always. You can pick any corner that you want to. It does not have to be the same one that I'm working on. It can be any of them. But what I'm going to do is take this brush and I'm going to kind of outline first. So going this way, and then also going this way. That this is going to help me kind of paint inside the lines. And again, if you feel like this is kind of painting over some of the fluff that you already painted, you can paint that once again at the end. I, I, I will add some at the end to kind of show you that. So you can use either um, the medium paintbrush or you can even go back to the large one, which is what I think I'm going to do for this. Don't want too much water that's why i'm kind of scraping it on the side there and when i brush this in you can you can really go in any direction as well i'm going to go like kind of sideways and up and down and starting in the corner i'm going through and making my way to the outside corner so starting on in the middle and brushing kind of like sideways it's almost like weaving you can kind of see your brush strokes and it gets kind of weaving through. I am going to get the sides. I am also going to get the top. Now up here, what you'll notice in the original one is that the top is that the corners are a little bit darker. Not a lot darker, just a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing here with my other colors. I'm going to add just a tiny little pin prick of black to some of my red. That's going to make more of a deep red color, like a burgundy red. And I'm going to brush that just into the corner, so just back and forth through here. And because all of this is still wet, it's going to blend in really nicely. So just back and forth, and that way that color is really just in the corner and not in the rest of the painting. So then I'm just going to repeat that. I'm going to. Um, I'm gonna rinse my brush just because I have the black and red mixture in the bristles, and I only want that to be in certain areas. So you can probably even use this large paintbrush to do your outlining if you don't wanna keep switching back and forth. Um, so I can use this to just drag carefully across here. And especially because we are gonna be, when we paint the, the black of the belt in, um, it's, it, it will help kind of clean this up a little bit. So I don't have to worry about getting red in areas where it doesn't belong. The black will cover it up really easily. So I'm still kind of going like in downward and then going across again. And then when I start to reach the corner, I'm going to grab that small amount of black and red. And I'm going to brush that in instead. If it seems like it's too much and they're like, oh, I didn't mean to make it quite that dark, take your paper towel, dry off your brush a little bit. You don't wanna to have too much paint on there. And then you'll be able to kind of go through with your dry paintbrush and help to kind of, kind of blur that in a little bit more. So that way it's not all over or it, it doesn't look, it, it's gonna end up 
blending in more. It's not gonna look quite so scary there. Notice I did get some red in there where I want the belt to be later on, but that's not gonna matter because my black's gonna help to clean that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these two corners in the exact same manner that I finished the first um, two. And I'm gonna allow you to pause your video. So go ahead and finish up your corners as well. Just make sure you kind of start in the corner and then add that darker uh, bit at the end. But I'm gonna go ahead and pause my video. Uh, make sure that you let yours dry before you unpause it and we'll come back and do um, the very last part, which is gonna be the belt and adding some extra trim. My painting is dry, which means I'm gonna go ahead and add in the black part of the belt. So this is really gonna help bring the whole painting together. Right now, it doesn't look like much, but adding the black is gonna make a huge difference. My water is a little murky, but adding that red water to black paint is not going to affect it at all. But do make sure that you sharpen your paintbrush, and that way you don't end up with paint that's too thick that is not going to give you a nice solid line. It's going to give you more of a fuzzy line if it's too thick. So now I can use this to go through and outline it, and what that's going to do is help to clean up any area of red where, or where I got red and I didn't mean to. I'm going to add that to the sides and I'm going to put this right here. Um, if you want to switch to your detail brush to get inside here, that would make perfect sense because that is a, this is a pretty tiny area. And especially if your brush wants to split like mine is, let's go grab an older brush. And the bristles don't want to stick together as much as I'd like them to. Go ahead and get this side as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. Um, you can, if you'd like to, you can switch to your large paintbrush once again. This painting does have a lot of large areas with the same color. Not a lot of detail. So as I brush this in, you can see already how I mentioned earlier how the trim is going to look a lot lighter. And reason being is just because we now have dark areas to help show that it's a light spot and it doesn't look nearly as dark as it used to. here. I'm going to get the side. And of course, I'm going to get that little tiny area that is in between. Now this still doesn't look quite like my original painting here because it needs a little bit of extra detail. Um, I'm going to do some outlining with my white and also with black to help uh, make everything kind of stand out. Detail brush, black paint. I'm going to add a little bit of black, just kind of like deliberately kind of brushy and sort of imperfect. We're aiming for imperfection here. So this is not meant to be a perfect outline, but I'm going to go kind of across here, just drag my brush through between the, um, the white and the red, just to sort of add some contrast. I can do the same thing down here, but I'm just deliberately making it so that it's not perfect. I'm gonna do that once again, just at the top and bottom of my belt here. That's gonna help make that buckle, or the buckle, I'm sorry, not the belt, the buckle. That's gonna help to make that stand out as well. And then I can also put in some white highlights. So I'm gonna, same detail brush, white paint, and to outline the belt, you're gonna do you're going to drag this kind of across this way. And again, this is already making a big difference in how put together my painting looks and how finished it looks right through there. And I'm going to add in some highlights across my buckle, as I mentioned earlier, with some white. Now that that paint is dry, I can add in that, and that's going to help the, bu the buckle to look a lot more reflective. And last but not least, if you would like to add a little bit more fluff to your trim, just make sure you rinse. I'm going to use my medium brush and make sure you rinse it pretty well. 
This time I'm gonna grab just white and not the gray. And then I can go through and add in a few more spots like this to help kind of brighten it up. You can also add a little bit that kind of crosses over into the red. And what that does is just make it look like it's a little bit more fluffy. It's, it's really soft. It's got a soft texture to it. So that's completely up to you if you want to add that in. It's your own artistic decision on that. Add some down here too. I don't need to make it too, too fluffy. All right, so if you want to sign your painting, um, I suggest using the detail paintbrush for that. And I'm gonna sign mine in black. I often just use initials when I do sign my paintings, and that way it doesn't overtake the artwork. But if you can sign it with a signature, I will be very impressed. I'd love to see it. Um, in fact, I would love to see all of your paintings. So get your cameras out, get a selfie with you and your Sandoval painting, and you can send it to us so that we can see your lovely artwork. So that can be either emailed to us or posted to our Facebook page. But um, please send this to us, and Merry Christmas. I will see you next week.